call the uh, this public hearing of the Winter Board of Health <coughs> to order. Uh, my name is Bill Schmidt, and I am chair of the Board of Health at 605. Um, with me is Susan McGuire, who's a member of the Board of Health. Astrid Wines, who is the vice chair, we got, just got a text that she's going to be two minutes late. Um, probably, hopefully, uh, by the time I go through my remarks, she'll be here. In any event, she can also watch this. Uh, could be at WCAT, um, and it is being recorded, and it might be televised. So even though not required by law, the Board of Health is holding this public hearing because of the broad interest in uh, reducing single-use plastic checkout bags, and to provide a public forum for comments from all interested parties. A legal notice appeared in the winter transcript on September 19th. Uh, regarding this public hearing. Uh, also, uh, we had notice of this hearing on the proposed regulation was delivered to most of the retail establishments in the town of Winthrop that we had <coughs> listings for. So as I said, this public hearing is to discuss the proposed town of Winthrop regulation for reduction in single-use plastic checkout bags. The proposed Regulation has been posted on the Town of Winters Board of Health website. A copy is available here at the meeting as well. Uh, as I said, it's on our website. Uh, the mission of the Winter Board of Health is to pr protect, promote, and regulate public health in the Town of Winter, which includes uh, a clean environment. The Board of Health assumes a proactive approach in dealing with the challenges of public health. Board of Health is granted authority by Massachusetts general laws to make reasonable health regulations. This proposed regulation is based on the sincere belief that it will benefit the public health and environment of our citizens in the town of Winter. As the purpose of this public hearing is to collect information and opinions, the board will, will not ask for a vote from the audience, nor will the board itself vote on the proposed regulation of this public hearing. We may discuss and vote on the proposed regulation at its, our October meeting, which is currently scheduled for Tuesday the 8th at 6 p.m. Generally, it's in this room. Uh, in addition to tonight's public hearing, the board will accept written testimony until Monday, October 7th. Comments can be submitted to the Winter Board of Health Care of 100 Kennedy Drive, Winter Mass, 02152. The draft regulation, which is the subject of tonight's public hearing, contains some significant pr provisions, which I will go through. One, single-use plastic checkout bags shall not be distributed, used, or sold for checkout or other purposes at any retail establishment within the town. Retail establishments are strongly encouraged to make reusable checkout bags available for sale to customers at a reasonable price. A retail establishment that provides any type of checkout bag, excluding the prohibited single-use plastic checkout bags, shall sell them for no less than five cents per bag. All monies collected pursuant to this regulation shall be retained by the retail establishment. Any charge for a checkout bag shall be separately stated on the receipt provided to the customer at the time of sale and shall be identified as the checkout bag charge therein. So I know, for instance, when I go to the marketplace and I bring uh, a return in and I get a slip, it's, it's marked that way um, as a reduction. Thin film, film, excuse me, thin film single-use plastic bags used to contain dry cleaning, newspapers, baked goods, bulk goods, meats, seafood, produce, wet items, and other similar merchandise are still permissible. Any retail establishment distributing single-use plastic checkout bag in violation of the regulation shall be subject to a fine which will be paid to the town of Winter. The Board of Health may grant a waiver for a period of up to six months of the effective date of enactment in this regulation, which would cause an undue hardship to the retail establishment. It's expected that if it's passed by the Board, the effective date of the regulation would be sometime in the spring of 2020 six months after the Board of Health votes its approval. I'll notice it's now 6.10, and Astrid Lines, who is the Vice Chair of the Board, has uh, 
entered, who is now here. I'm just going through some opening remarks, uh, <coughs> ground rules. Uh, first of all, the <coughs> board really appreciates everyone taking the time to be here this evening. In the interest of time, we ask that you adhere to the following ground rules. So first of all, we'd like you to sign in. You don't have, whether you want to testify or not, if you want to be recorded in favor or in opposition to the proposed regulation, we ask that you sign in. Particularly, obviously, if you're going to speak, we'd like to have that record. When addressing the Board of Health, you must first identify yourself by name, your address, and any other professional affiliation you might have that impacts your comments. Identify the issue of the proposed regulation that you wish to comment on. Please limit your comments to five minutes so that other members of the audience will have a chance to speak. I'm going to ask, ask it if you can keep time. Okay. Um, please be considerate of those persons speaking whether you agree or disagree with them and refrain from commenting out of turn. Also, as I mentioned before, a written comment period for those who are unable to t uh, attend tonight's public hearing or who might be here don't wish to testify uh, but want to submit comments. Instead, as I said, we'll be allowed to have those through October 7th. Any person showing verbal disrespect, which I've had a few hearings and that hasn't happened, thankfully, uh, but if that does, we would ask you to please leave. But I don't expect that to happen. First of all, we're going to accept testimony in favor of the proposed regulation. Then we'll follow that with testimony in opposition to the proposed regulation. As I've said, your input is very valuable to us, and your concerns will be seriously considered before the regulation is finalized. And let me just point out a couple of times we've been doing regulations, we've actually had very helpful testimony from members of the audience, and we've modified uh, some of our provisions based on the testimony that we received. So it is very helpful um, for you to express your concerns and, and, and we really want to take that uh, into, uh, into consideration. So I appreciate your cooperation. Um, so we'll take, first of all, anyone who wants to speak in favor of, of the proposed regulation. Yeah. No one here, no one here speaking in favor? My name is Karina Campobasso. I live at 795 Shirley Street. Uh, I'm a member of Mothers Out Front, uh, the group that I think it's fair to say is behind the, the proposed regulation. Um, we're very much in favor of it uh, because of the terrible effect that plastic has on our environment. Um, hopefully this ban will get people not to buy other kinds of bags as much in certain respects they will have to, and I know maybe there will be people speaking about that, but we'll get them into the habit of bringing their own bags to places like the Winthrop Marketplace and other establishments here. I've been bringing my own bags for 19 years to the uh, Winthrop Marketplace, so I can say that I think I've saved Mr. Wallace some money. Um, so uh, um, I know there are some arguments against the, the ban, and the, including that they cause uh, other bags, people to have to purchase other bags of different kinds because people use their bags for dog waste, uh, trash, etc. Um, my response to that is if people are buying, have to buy what they are using, they are going to be more careful about how they use it. They'll fill up their trash bags to the top if they have to buy bigger bags. Uh, they'll use smaller bags for dog waste that are meant for that. And um, I, do, I am happy to hear about the exceptions, the certain ex the exceptions for fish, because uh, I think there, might, there are people that might be concerned about fish, and um, some of the other exemptions are uh, very worthwhile. So I am very much in favor of it, and thank you very much, all of you on the Board of Health, for working so hard on this ordinance. Thank you. say something too. I'm, I'm Carol Walker. I'm also from Mother's Oak Front. And um, and I am, you know, of course, very much in favor of this. And, and uh, I, um, I, you know, I believe the plastic bags I know have been, uh, um, you know, it's another plastic that's been eaten by um, 
seabirds and um, it, 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 which you know is, is uh, toxic to them. It's another plastic that's broken down into little pieces and stays in the environment for, for decades and, and, and uh, <clears throat> it, you know it has, they've, they've uh, um, and uh, it's you know they they uh, they they don't they don't uh, they're very toxic and dangerous to the, to the sea life and the, and the fish and we have to, and we know that people have plastic in their bodies as as it's been tested so it's bad for us we have to get this is a major step and way that we can get rid of a lot of this plastic that is very bad for humans so I'm glad that we're taking this this great first step. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else who wants to speak in favor of the regulation? Hi, my name is Teresa Carroll. I'm a resident here. I live at 39 Pearl Elf. Um, and I'm in favor for all the reasons that these women from Mothers Out Front have listed. They're great. I do have one concern about it, and uh, my concern would be mostly geared towards the elderly in our town and uh, the residents on fixed income. Um, I know, you know, just going to the grocery store, you know, watching some of, you know, the people counting out from their change purse, are they going to have it in their budget to now purchase bags for all their stuff if they maybe forget their bags or is there going to be some sort of way where an elderly person or our veterans are not going to be charged for these bags because they just, I feel like that would be, though the plastic bag, um, I don't think we should have them. I also don't think that that extra cost should fall on the people who just have enough to buy their food. That's just my only, I don't know how you could figure that out, um, but that's my concern about it. That's it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else who wants to speak a bit? Yes, Can we speak even though we said we wouldn't? <laughs> Well, you can have a second thought. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Nan House. I live on uh, Washington Ave, okay. uh, 241. And I'm sure we've all heard the usual um, reasons for banning uh, plastic bags. Um, the fact that if they're up at the one, two, and three top of the global pollutants and the global trash, cigarette butts being up there, and maybe plastic straws as far as litter. But um, I've studied up on this, as many of us have, and the process of even producing the plastic bag. Uh, it uses fracked gas. It, it creates pollution from the start is going to take. And admittedly, the plastic bags are a very small part of improving the climate, improving the um, reduction of, of uh, fossil fuel use, a very small part. But over time, I mean, we have plastics that layer the ocean floor deeper than we can go in the Pacific. But I live um, right next to a little beach. And it's very disheartening to see the plastic bags flattened when it's low tide. Uh, there is a lot of other plastic also, sheets of plastic, et cetera, et cetera. But there are definitely plastic bags. And at low tide, they just settle into the mud. And then the tide comes in, and then there may be another one or another two or three. But it's the fact that they do not disintegrate. They may go to a molecular structure, but they don't go away. Any plastic bag will not go away. But then so the idea of being able to reuse or substitute a bag, a bag that's made of uh, <coughs> uh, plant fibers even, that will biodegrade. But there's a misleading term, I think it's called biodegradable. But all that means is it'll break down. It doesn't mean it will go away. So, uh, and I, I'll say that I am also a member of Mothers Out Front, but I also want to hear what the retailers' concerns are, and that's 
mainly why I'm here tonight, but um, definitely a proponent of even if it's a small step, we're starting something here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wants to speak in favor? Thank you, Bill. Um, I, I don't know if this is the right time. I'm not necessarily speaking about Jim Letary, Brookfield Road, uh, owner of Letary's Market in the center. Uh, not speaking in favor or against. I'm not really taking a position. I just wanted to ask you some questions if, um, and just offer some information like you had said earlier. And so, so, Jim, I appreciate you being here. We're not going to offer uh, information. We're not really going to testify. So we're looking for information. So, well, that's why I thought you were looking for information. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. We're looking for information. So in terms of asking questions. Oh, no, I'm of... trying to provide some okay. information just to okay. see how it's... Okay. It, and, okay. Fair enough. <clears throat> and, um, and I really appreciate Bill and Susan and Astrid for, for doing this. And you know, I think it's a step that the town has to look at. Um, and I appreciate all the comments. I think they're all really good. Um, I'm not really here to say absolutely I'm in favor or absolutely I'm against, but I just wanted to, I, I know there's been comments about the effects of, with, uh, with eliminating the single-use bags, that there may be, there's obviously more purchase of larger bags, and, and I think Bill had mentioned at a council meeting about, you know, your intention really isn't to change people to paper bags, correct? Yeah, yeah. because there's a huge increase in the, in the manufacturing of paper bags, but um, so I guess my question was, I, I had asked my vendor to see what the options are because I know in Boston, you know, it's, it's mandated pretty much in, in a lot of local places and this was something that they had said that they had on. Are you familiar with this? This is, uh, and I'll leave this for you to look at. Well, I know when I go to CBS. When I go to CBS, oh, is this what they have? Boston, they have pla plastic type bags. Okay, yeah. so this is a, um, it's a bag made in the USA. It can be reused up to 125 times. A bag's uh, Minimum 90% recycled content. Uh, bag is made with 50% green energy. The bag is uh, recyclable by a supermarket bill. Um, so a bag like this costs um, 17 cents, it, roughly. Um, you, for, for somebody like me, it's a little bigger to use, but this is the, the most common stock because it's probably the most common use sizes in supermarkets and CVS and such. Um, so, and I guess the only information that I would offer, so this is basically something that we would probably go to, I'll leave this for you guys. Um, and the only information, the only, you know, I've read uh, pretty much what everybody else has read about the positives and minuses, and you've got to take a stand, I guess, somewhere. Um, but the one suggestion that people did have that maybe, you know, is some sort of compromise is to have, uh, you know, somebody made a, a, a a question about a charge and how, you know, this is 17 cents, do you charge 17 cents, do you charge 5, 10, I don't know. Um, one suggestion that I did read about was the fact that for the environment, in the long run, it might be better to keep the single-use bag, but have a fee for the bag if it's 5 cents or whatever. So now you're kind of encouraging people not to use the bag, because nobody wants, even if it's a nickel, nobody wants to pay a nickel. It's, it's funny the way people, I mean, I'm the same way, if you have a choice to pay a nickel or not, if I go to Macy's to buy something, they say, oh, do you want a bag? I'm going to probably say no, and I'll carry it. Why would I do that? Um, but one of the thoughts were to have a check, keep, keep the single-use bags, because in the end, it's using less energy, emitting less fossil fuels than making the, the larger bags, and having a fee. This way, you're encouraging people not to use the single-use bag. Um, so that's just one offer I would uh, be your consideration. And I'll leave this back to you guys. And thank you for all your help. Thank you. I think you're leaning towards kind of against, but that's okay. <laughs> um, anyone else who wants to speak in favor? Anyone? Right, unless somebody comes in later. Okay. Well, appreciate that. Uh, now I'll take those in opposition. Your name, sir. Um, Mark Wallace, Precinct 2, uh, 38 Edge Hill Road, also owner of the Winter Marketplace. Um, you know, I've, I've, most of the people in here are loyal customers, so you know, so we're really on the fence on certain things of this nature, and this is not easy yet for us to say, you know, we're totally opposed. But I listened to the young lady speak here. We did a survey. And the survey came back, a lot of people were saying, let's ban them. 
But the biggest problem they had on it is we don't want to pay a fee. Now, to, to um, and I want to make sure I don't go over my time limit here, but looking at the cost of the bags, okay, and I don't want to seem like we're money hungry, but looking at the cost of the bags is more than double what we will be paying. And that's a lot of money. To see a lot of senior citizens... When you say double, from like what to what? Well, if I use a bag like that, it would be triple. Yeah. Okay, it's more than triple, to be honest. So okay. what, you, what, you, what what's your cost? I'm just trying to give an idea of your cost, because double is the same stretch. Well, like, that's like 17 cents. Well, what do you pay? 18 cents right now? What do you now? pay now? I'm paying a lot less, and I'll leave it at that. Okay? If that's okay. Well, that's okay, but I'm saying... It's a lot less. When you say double, it's not... It's triple. Like it's triple, so... Okay. This, this would be true. Okay. Yeah. So now, I can go to that bag, okay, but there has to be a fee involved. Okay, so where do I pass it on to? You know, to, to look at raising my prices? I don't want to do that. Or to, to charge it off to the customer. We'd love to say, you know what, come in, you know, maybe, and, and bring those bags back. But a lot of customers don't. And so it really, that's something that we're really concerned with. Very concerned. And how did you arrive at a five cents cost? Well, if you don't mind me asking. No, no. It's the Boston City, Boston regulation. That's what it is in. Okay. So Boston. that's minimum five cents. That's what it says. So I would have to charge ten cents. Well, you still, don't have to. You may. Well, I, I will. Okay. I will. I have to. And it's still be losing money. It's something that I don't want to do. Um, you know, so it's very hard for us. We've, we've gone back and forth with this. And is Winthrop recycling right now? Is Winthrop recycling right now? Yes. Um, I don't think they recycle plastic bags anyway. Okay, they don't recycle it. Are they recycling it at all? I don't know. I don't know. Enough. It's the same collection system they yeah. had before. It's, uh, the contract is the same. Okay. So, I mean, that's another question we had. But, so, this is, this is our argument against it. You know, whether, whether you know, on a question like this, I don't think there is any clear-cut winners. You know, whether you be in it, whether you don't. We're here just to tell you the cost and what it's going to affect. And it's going to affect our customers in the long run. And that's something that we really don't want to do. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Anyone else who wants to speak in opposition?
of how to make what they call plastic out of uh, wood pulp and uh, silk. So it, it's an interesting bag, and the cost effectiveness at this point, because it's still new, isn't quite at a price point that's viable. But that would be the kind of a combination of actually kind of like plastic and something that is actually kind of biodegradable. It's not true plastic because it's spider web and uh, wood pulp. And it actually, they don't cut trees down for it. So, but in the, the aspect where we're at now, I think for customers in our small town and people address the elderly and those on limited budgets, you know, that extra five cents can add up and you have to get five, six bags maybe you carry and stuff. So, can't stand for it against, but I think for long term environmental, I think the single use is still kind of more the viable option because I haven't seen one person who gets a single use bag that doesn't use it a lot more than once. So. I think you were leaning towards the gap. Um, anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Yes, I'm not, uh, Chris Wallace, uh, 143 Morton Street. Uh, so it's not a comment, I guess. It's more something that I hope to see on the full like regulation when it comes out. I haven't seen it anywhere. Uh, you're looking at the uh, low income um, population, we have a lot of customers on food stamps use the EBT card. Is this something that will be covered on through food stamps because they are going through every little, as people have said, every little nickel and dime that they have. Um, and I haven't seen whether it goes one way or the other as we try to like, limit our costs as sure. a store. I um, want to make sure that things are covered or not. And so just as you go forward, make sure it's very clear. And I don't know how other towns have done it. Well, they can't. Um, so. When I went to the state house, there was discussion about that. And, and right currently, it's not a lot. Not a lot. So it's something that has to just be passed right on to the customer. Anyone else who wants to testify in opposition? Okay. Um, hearing none, I'll call, I'll call this portion of the uh, hearing closed at um, 6.33. So as I said earlier, um, we're going to still accept uh, written comments through October 7th, and I think I gave the address before which is um, Board of Health uh, Care of uh, 100 Kennedy Drive, Winter Mass, 02152. Um, and uh, we appreciate everyone coming. The next Board of Health meeting uh, is set for Tuesday, uh, October 8th at 6 o'clock. We may uh, discuss this uh, item at that meeting. We may have a vote. I'm not sure. But I do appreciate everybody's comments and thank you for coming to see.